friends, how are you? Welcome to this amazing snowy Friday here in Overland Park, Kansas. My name is Dr. Heather and welcome to Ask Dr. Heather. On this Friday, I'm actually gonna do a live Q&A because uh, generally what happens is it seems to be a trend in questions. Uh, generally people have tend to have a trend in questions about um, what's happening with your thyroid or what's happening with your gut health. But today if I kind of had questions or this week, questions kind of all over the place. So I thought I'd just kind of do a live open Q&A. So as you're joining me, let me know where you're coming from. I do apologize, I'm a few minutes late because I have a German Shepherd puppy and she has been Pretty chatty today. There's been some squirrels out with our snow. We've got snow here in Overland Park, Kansas. So she's been seeing little critters pop up and around. So she's been a little barky at them. So I thought um I thought I'd actually start as you're joining us and you've got some questions about keto snacks. So a few years ago, I had to take hours to explain what keto was. The great thing is, is a lot of people understand what keto is, and it seems like the more you understand, the more confused you get. Now, I know people say that all the time. The more you understand about anything, the more there is to learn. But years ago, we used to talk about keto, and we talked about keto, it was generally about healthy fats, nuts and seeds, olives, avocados, but now there's all these different snacks that actually pulled up my Amazon. So I'm gonna turn my phone around here just a second, because I don't want to name any certain brands, but I pulled up Amazon. And when you start to scroll down, you have all these little snacks over here. And they can all be super confusing as you guys see this. Again, I'm going fast and not call out any product, but you see the word keto over all this kind of stuff, right? Or Atkins, Atkins, modified Atkins. So you see I'm going quick, 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 not to name a brand. So I'm going to stop that. And I was going to actually talk with a Dr. Jamie. I said, you know, we should just go to the grocery store and do this. But, you know, let's talk about this. Why is there not the word keto on this lemon? I thought I had celery, but we ate it all. Why is there not keto on celery or lemon? We used to talk about keto or low carb or just whole foods. If I had a head of lettuce, a head of cauliflower, I didn't stamp keto on it. We know that whole foods by themselves, steaks and chicken and fish, those are all keto. They're low carb. They're healthy and high fats or moderate proteins. You know, or we start to look at things that are actually keto like Swerve, which is a sugar replacer. It doesn't have low carb, doesn't have keto, doesn't have paleo. Or we um, see a lot of, again, I'm just, I had these in my cupboard. So solo brain of things. Or actually have this pancake mist. So this does say keto on it. But for me, the macros really aren't keto. They're really more zone. They're kind of 40, 30, 30. So when I look at this, the protein is nine, the fats are 11, and the carbs are 10. So I actually put two eggs in this. So actually up the the protein with this, so two eggs is 14 more grams of protein. Then I add a little bit of grass-fed butter, so I up the fat on it to keep the carbs low. So even though it says keto, the macros don't work for even one single meal. I actually have to manipulate that. So I think this creates so much confusion. So oftentimes when I'm helping people figure out a lifestyle that works for them, a lot of times we say, Forget buying all this package stuff, you know, and forget trying to make a maple syrup work for you. Go back to eating real whole foods. Eat when hungry, stop when full, and eat if it's one ingredient, like pot roast is one ingredient, or chicken breast is one ingredient, broccoli is one ingredient, cucumber is one ingredient. If you want to have some berries, strawberry, one ingredient. And yes, many people can have strawberries on a low-carb, ketogenic, balanced, low-carb lifestyle. But this is when I started scrolling, when you start trying to get all these little... Let me see some dirty, late, lazy, keto, snacky, pecans, whatever stuff to work inside some math. It gets so frustrating. It causes so much stress and you don't know why the strips and the blood and the this, that. So I generally have people just go back to real whole food because people are like, well, how come you've had success helping people over 20 years? Like, why is it working? Like, because we make it simple. Like, if you have to drive through, you just throw the buns away, forget the ketchup and get mustard. Mustard is generally always keto. I actually brought in some Frank's hot sauce. It's zero carbs. It doesn't say keto. It doesn't say low carb. It doesn't say paleo. It doesn't say like, I'm going to use Slim Fast bars or South beach bars that have 25 different ingredients in it and then they do this crazy little math minus this minus this minus this no when you're talking about eating real whole foods and that's really what it's about eating foods real whole foods that have one ingredients maybe two if you're buying like a broccoli cauliflower stir fry and then you add butter and that's three ingredients so when you're starting to make a lifestyle change what you want to do is cut out anything that's processed and even these things i showed you from the beginning so if you jumped on late a little pause let me know where you're joining us from i'm joining you from overland park snowy kansas where the kiddos didn't have school again on this friday i was tardy jumping on because my german shepherd was a little barky and chatty today at the squirrels outside so 
let me know where you're joining us from. If you have a pet, let me know what kind of pet you have and what your name is. Our beautiful dog's name is Danny, short for Daenerys, because she is uh, the mother of dragons. The boys named her from the Game of Thrones, so we call her Danny for short. People often think she's a boy, but she's a girl. Hey, Lori, thanks for joining me. I know she's just around the corner. So I was getting a lot of questions. People like, well, I have gut issues. Can I do a keto diet? Or I have bowel issues? Or what if I have this? And what if thyroid issues? And what I have that? So a lot of times we're talking about eating keto or low carb. Should I eat a keto low carb diet? Well, should you eat non-processed food? My answer is yes. And when you're teaching a low carb ketogenic zone balanced diet, I'm always teaching eat non-processed feed food, eat real whole food. That's one ingredient. I think that's great for everybody's gut. I think that's good for everybody's thyroid. I think it's good for everybody's adrenal gland insufficiency. So when we start talking about what's good for the body and then where we go from there, we take away the top 10 food allergens if you don't want to have all this crazy testing done. But we do do, I want to say crazy, it's very, very important because I do, we do a lot of allergy testing in our office because people don't want to cut out foods if they don't know. And you know, we do stool analysis test as well but I always want to go back to the basics because people are asking me should I do this a diet and I always say check with your healthcare provider first I'm not your normal physician I'm not your treating physician I don't have access to all your healthcare needs and your all path health history however when you start talking about making lifestyle and dietary changes, again, take a big step back. We look at the original diet, whether it's a low carb, high fat diet. High fats aren't these processed moon chip cheese bits. It is grass fed butter that was made from a cow or it was avocado that was grown, right? Or it was a coconut oil, which we know has so many amazing healthy benefits itself. And I tell people, if you can't put it on your skin, don't put it in your mouth. So, oh my gosh, Anne-Marie has 10 horses, four dogs, four cats, and 10 chickens. That's amazing in San Antonio. So I don't think you have any snow down there. So I knew you were there. Hey, Nan, nice to chat with you again from down, down in the Texas area. So I love knowing where people are from. I know Tracy's from Australia. So thanks for joining me. And Mike is from Saskatchewan, Regina, Saskatchewan, up there in Canada. So um, I did get some questions. People like, do you think it's a good idea if I switch to like a keto diet? So for me, the answer is generally yes. I want you eating whole real foods that have one or two ingredients. And yes, I think it's a great idea to eat a balanced diet that's moderate in, in protein and that is high in carbohydrates. That carbohydrates come from green leafy vegetables and you know things like squashes and peppers and things that have minerals and trace minerals so today well, I really wanted to do a live Q&A because I can tell you my message box I have 350 questions that people private message me so I'd rather do a live Q&A because a lot of them are repeat questions about can I do this can I do that well what about me well does it do this the great thing is is when you're switching a diet I want you to think about this for a second I talk all the time about energy our body needs energy to run on it either uses Carbohydrates that break down into glucose, which is an energy, or body breaks down healthy fats into ketones. So two energy sources, glucose or ketones. But think about this, and I probably haven't said this in a while on a video, our body is its own pharmacy. So if you need iron, because people get anemic, our body breaks it down from red meats, it breaks it down from green leafy vegetables like spinach, it uses B12 and folic acid, and it makes iron. Our body needs calcium for strong, healthy bones. Calcium is also our body's natural tranquilizer, so it also helps our nervous system calm down, it helps our brain, it helps our bones, it helps our teeth. Um, again, our body's natural tranquilizer, we get that also. So from nuts and seeds and other things from pink fishes and white fish so our body can break it down from the foods that we're eating so for eating packaged things that have words all over it there's really a hard time for our body to kind of decipher where in there is the calcium why is that not happening a red bell pepper has more calcium than a glass of milk if you didn't know that so we look at things that a whole red bell pepper is very very medicinal it's your body again it's our own pharmacy so if you're not eating a whole real food that our body can break down then you're not going to get those minerals that we need you're not gonna get those vitamins that we need we need 21 basic amino acid amino acids are the building blocks to our body essential we have we need essential amino acids we need essential fatty acids essential means a must for life a muscle a must for rebuilding our bodies 
when it gets damaged and we use our bodies from day to day. So I went swimming today. If you did some exercise today, write down what you did today. If you worked out today, maybe you shoveled snow if you're in Overland Park, Kansas. I would say that's a big activity if you shovel snow because it's kind of wet out there today. It's just kind of a wet. We had a rain yesterday and then we got snow. So it's definitely a heavy wet snow that we have here today. Maybe Mike shoveled some snow up in Canada today, but I don't think that uh, Anne Marie probably shoveled any snow in San Antonio. But if you, if you did some exercise today and went to the gym, or went and ran and worked out, let me know how you worked out today because your body, that's a tear down process. And as you tear down when you work out, then your body needs to rebuild. It rebuilds through building blocks. And then we know that actually healthy fats actually help reduce some of the inflammation in our body. We know sugar feeds the inflammation. So if you worked out and you treated yourself to a donut afterwards, you just actually probably didn't utilize the best use of your time. I'm really using choice words because I want to say something bad, but I'm not going to. But if you worked out like, oh, I deserve a Pop-Tart after that, or I deserve a donut after that. No, you just tore down your muscles when you work out. And then especially for women, we want to keep our lean muscle mass in order to protect our lean muscle mass. We want to keep our, our fats healthy high because we know ketones help protect lean muscle mass. We know carbohydrates turn on myostatin, which actually breaks down lean muscle mass. That's the last thing you want to do after you work out, whether it's yoga, whether it's shoveling snow, whether it's going swimming. So all those things are super healthy for your body. So I don't see you guys having any big questions here. I have 350 questions in my inbox and people are like, why are you answering me? Why are you answering me? So I'm being like question after question, but then you guys aren't answering them here. So, um, and Nan did some circuit training, which is awesome. I love to do circuit training. I love you. Interval training is so good for your body, which is, you know, doing some weights and doing 40 to 60 seconds of a super high impact cardiovascular and then doing some more weight training and then doing very high, super high cardiovascular support as well. So that's actually great for your body. Um, I actually print off questions as well as what people have. So I may go through and see what I've got question wise over here, but I am getting a lot of questions like, like, what about this? What about this snack? What about that snack? What about this? What about that? Well, um, what about this rice? What about that? Well, we know that there's no essential carbohydrates. So people say, well, what about your family? Sometimes I see you doing that. Well, there are people who are on a ketogenic diet or people on a low carb diet who actually can have two to 300 grams of carbohydrates and break them down because their bodies are that fuel efficiently. They're that metabolically strong. They're that much of a machine, I'm going to say, that they can actually burn that efficient. One of my sons is six foot six. He uh, works as a manager in a restaurant and he tracks his steps. He actually just walks as a manager over a mile, a marathon. He does 26 to, 23 to 26 um, miles every single week he works just in the restaurant, walking, 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 walking. Plus he works out and does other things, his activity of daily living, but in his normal job, that's his activity of daily living on his normal job is walking a marathon. I'm sure many of you, if you work in a warehouse or you're up and down stairs or you're a nurse and you're walking aboard or a doctor or a fireman or a police officer, whatever your activity of daily living, you're walking and bear, um, you know, tearing down lean muscle mass, then you want to eat in that eight hour window. And then you want the rest of the time, you want your body to rebuild and repair that rebuilding and repairing spot is very, very important because what you want to have happen when you eat in that eight hour window, then you want your body to whatever it is that you ate in that eight hour window or nine or 10 hour window to be very important because what you rebuild with is what you ate in that window. Now, if you're like the average person, you're eating in a 17 hour window and you're eating all the time and you're sucking on mints and gums because you're afraid your mouth might taste bad or smell bad or just only one bite of this or only one bite of that won't hurt or a bottom of the bag fire, only one bun, I'll keep one bun and I'll keep one and throw one away or whatever the math is people do. Then you're like, What's your body going to use to repair? What's this going to use to make calcium with? Maybe you need stronger bones. Maybe you sit all day and you don't walk a marathon at your job and sitting is a new smoking and how are you going to get strong bones and how is your body going to calm down if you're an overstimulated, overstressed job and you're not eating green leafy vegetables and to get good healthy calcium from and you don't even like salmon and you don't like fish or cod or halibut where you get lots of calcium from or you don't like sardines or Brazil nuts which you get magnesium from. Magnesium is also one of our smooth muscle relaxers magnesium deficiency which were a lot of people magnesium deficient because you have eat carbohydrates carbohydrates actually make you deficient in b vitamins and magnesium which lead to sensitivity and noise and sound it can lead to headaches it can lead to constipation it can lead to restless leg syndrome lots and lots of things can lead to magnesium deficiency and you get them from eating sardines i don't like to eat them either so i supplement with, with magnesium but i do eat nuts and seeds sunflower seeds sesame seeds pumpkin seeds those type of things and i do 
do eat pink fish, um, but it's hard to get good quality pink fish like trout and salmon and those type of things. And you know, do heart doctors say you should eat them at least three times a week. And I don't really meet people that eat red fish three times a week. But anyway, I would love to have your questions if they're coming down through here. But um, I guess, but I also love seeing that you guys do TRX and you do bands and cardio and weights. And, and yes, yeah, the average person, that's a great question. Thanks, Julie. The average person, when I was in school and I graduated over 20 years ago on tests, the average person takes 15,000 steps a day. So I do have a little bit of a, good and bad relationship with the things that people keep the things because I'm not going to name a name that people keep track of be like oh my gosh I did 10,000 steps today. I'm like the average person takes 15,000 steps a day so you're not even doing the average so when people like but it's good because you know what your baseline is so if you're doing 3,000 or you're doing 5,000 or if you're doing 12,000 that's great but know that 15,000 is the actually the average so don't be average, be above average, be extraordinary, go above that. So if you know what the baseline is, and Julie, I'm not calling you out, I'm celebrating you for sharing that. 12,000 is great because I've had people come in and only doing three or 4,000 steps and they think that's awesome. But again, the average person takes 15,000 steps a day and we know that 75% of the people walking around the globe right now actually have, an, have a metabolic insulin resistant issue and 50% of the people walking around who again take 15,000 steps a day are already diabetic or pre-diabetic 1.5 billion people globally are suffering from chronic pain syndrome. We've got to up that. So what is the uh, good explanation of the impact of carbs? What is a good explanation of the impact of carbs? So, okay, Julie, this is a good ex explanation for what I see. We know that carbohydrates are a very, very short fuel source. So it's kind of like buying quality versus quantity. So if you're going to use a very inexpensive low quality fuel source, that's a carbohydrate. Carbohydrate gives us fuel for 30 minutes. Proteins give us fuel for 90 minutes. Fats can give us fuel for four to five to six plus hours. So we know that it uses it very quick, like kindling on a fire. You have to keep throwing the leaves on the fire. That's the carbohydrates. We know sugar increase, increases inflammation. We know fats decrease inflammation. We know that, sh that um, carbohydrates can actually cause dehydration. That's why the first sign of diabetes is increased thirst, increased inflammation. We know fats can actually help keep our body more hydrated because fats can actually help balance out hydration of our body because they offer, ketones offer more oxygen per molecule. So again, we know carbohydrates Carbohydrates can be very dehydrating because that first sign of a diabetic we see is increased thirst, increased dehydration. And again, sugars increase inflammation, fats decrease inflammation. So those are those are things most people generally understand. We also know that sugar is highly addictive. Carbohydrates come from sugar. So if you want it, and fats are not addictive. Fats are not addictive. Fats are also essential for life. Our body must need them. Carbohydrates are non-essential for life. So when you're comparing fuel source, carbohydrates are or glucose versus ketones or versus fats, we know that it's a much more efficient fuel source, fats versus glucose, so it's not very efficient. You get two fuel sources or two ATP versus three, we get 30% more oxygen plus for fat versus uh, glucose or, or ket I'm sorry, carbohydrates, I'm trying to be questioned, so it's a lot more efficient. So that's a, a great, great question. Um, and I love hearing people saying, uh, so, Yep, and just keep on going. So people, uh, see, how do you? Okay, so Sheree, I've got a great video I'll post. She says, how do you break a Staller Plateau? So I'm just gonna give two short, quick answers here because I wanna be super mindful of your time. And I have a great video on for the five ways to break a Staller Plateau. What happens is most people keep doing the same thing. So say that you start at 175 and you lose 20 pounds or 25 pounds, now you're at 150. People keep doing the same thing they've been doing, but you're no longer 175. Your body's not 175. So don't keep eating like you're 175 or exercising like you're 175. You need to actually exercise now like you're 150 and not 175. Or if you were 220 and now you're 200. You want to create metabolic flexibility. The first mistake people think make is that do the same thing each and every day. I've been doing this and I lost 25 pounds and now I'm not losing weight anymore. So I mean, eggs and bacon, I'm having chicken and broccoli and hamburger and green beans. You got to create metabolic confusion. You got to actually only eat when hungry, stop when full. One day a week, I do a 24 hour fast. Um, and that is lunch to lunch to me. I make sure I, we have beef on Monday. We have chicken on Tuesday. We have pink fish on Wednesday. We have turkey on Thursday. We have whitefish on Friday. So I'm creating metabolic confusion. The times that we eat vary, 
we know we always eat four hours before bedtime so my last meal if I miss it if I haven't eaten by like 6 30 or 7 I just generally end up having a cup of broth or tea some exogenous ketones or just water I don't go ahead and eat even though it's late in the olden days they used to tell people oh you better balance out your blood sugar go ahead and have something before you go to bed now we know that was bad science back in the 80s and 90s so I'll post that video. You can go over to um, Ask Dr. Heather on YouTube and to Break a Staller Plateau. And there's some more things about that. Some of it's just really sensitive, even just going to bed 15 minutes earlier, working on your sleep hygiene. I have a video on sleep hygiene, but rotating your foods, doing a 24 hour fast once a week, make sure you're drinking plenty of water, mix up your exercise, mix up your proteins, mix up your vegetables, create metabolic confusion, mix up your workouts. Um, again, that, those little shifts, uh, Five or six degree shift, not a one or two degree shift, can break a staller plateau. And sometimes it's mindset. I'll have people, I had a gallon yesterday and she told me she lost, um, she's lost 20 some pounds in 20 days and she's like, I always get stuck right here. So I had her take that number and say that number was 200. She's like, I always get stuck right here. I'm like, write 185 all over your house. Put a sticky notes and put 185 with your lipstick, put it on your refrigerator, put it on your um, mirror at home, put it on the bathroom, put it on your car, put it on your um, screensaver. Put that all over because you manifest and you visualize what does that look like? When's the last time you were there? What were you wearing? Were you wearing like a dress last time you weighed? Like this 185, we're just picking a number and wearing this, where, do, where were you and what did you look like? And when you start to manifest that, then your body remembers how to get there and how to do that you also have to mix up your exercise you can't I'm waking up at five o'clock I'm doing this exercise and eating this food you got to switch it up so those are hopefully some great I gave you a lot of tips in there but those little shifts will make big things happen so again big congrats but that should be a great way to actually help switch up or break a staller plateau but again I've got a good video on that um, and congratulations to everybody I mean one pound or two pounds 88 pounds starts with one pound at a time so just keep on going but you have to just keep doing little different changes it's called metabolic confusion to keep your body thinking and it's moving in different ways Awesome. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep, that's, I'm going to say we've done our about 15 minutes tonight. I want to check in. And also we've started calculating our macros. Everybody about a week ago, we started calculating. We had you keep your macros um, for five days. And then last Sunday, last Monday, we checked in and had you decrease your carbohydrates by 25%. So you know who you are that we're working and coaching you on decreasing your macros and getting you into a slow and steady ketosis. And then we also have um, a few of you that we're getting ready to start to roll into our 10 day keto kickstart, um, our 10 day keto kickstart reset. So if that's you, you got to put your hands up so we know who you are because we've been messaging and we've been putting you in our private Facebook group to coach you to get there. If you need to know more information then just private message me, just say 10 day info and we'll get you there if you haven't gotten the information. And again, I've got about 350 messages in my inbox. I am frantically working through. I do shut my email off at 10 o'clock central standard time. So I'm talking fast, but I am going to post a video. It's a little bit longer video, but it tells really about the different programs and why we really try to do things in a six week increment because it takes that long to make physical changes that long to make chemical changes that thing to make really physical changes if you go to a gym a trainer's going to tell you six weeks if you go to a doctor they're going to say take this medication for six to eight weeks and then see me back it takes that long to make physiological changes inside your body however I do things in 10 day programs because your tongue turns over in 10 days. I believe anybody can do anything for 10 days. It's just psychology. 10 days can do, you can do it for 10 days. You can cut out sugar for 10 days. You can stop snacking for 10 days. If I say a hundred days, it is so far and there's so many excuses and reasons. It just doesn't happen. I've tried this for 25 years. 10 days is an amazing deal. And once you get through 10 days and you can celebrate 10 days and we do in our 10 day program, we do a daily health hack. We do a layered learning. So you have success each and every day. Day. We help you ditch the drive through addiction. I know that drive through addiction. I have four kids. I used to have to drive through to get a Diet Coke to pick my kids up from school because I was so tired because of my adrenal fatigue, which I have fixed and I know how to get there. But I also know real life and kids having multiple sports. I know how to actually eat healthy and where to eat healthy and who has the higher quality foods when you need them. If you have to drive through or when you have to drive through, we traveled with a suburban over 300,000 miles. We had four kids that played travel sports, rowing, hockey, lacrosse. I get it. There's sometimes, and we did used to pack and freeze our own food. We've been gluten-free, dairy-free, um, 
for over 17 years in our household. Christian was Christian will be 22 in March, and when he was four, we went gluten-free. So it's been that long we've been gluten-free before. Everybody else was popular about it. Uh, we've been dairy-free, soy-free for that long. Um, peanut butter just kind of came back into the house when the kids turned about 18. So we were peanut-free for a very, very, very long time and used sun butter and almond butter and hazelnut butter. So anyway, I do try to practice what I preach and live what you see. So um, I want to thank you guys for joining me today. We want to check in on people who are calculating and dropping your macros. You guys know who I'm talking about. You've been following me. And again, don't be afraid. We want to help you start your way in the right way. I have an amazing eight-page free guide to start your day in the right way. We have an autoimmune-friendly, keto friendly low carb friendly food guide that is what we hand out in our office and teach people eat from this guide it will help you start your day in the right way it's some of my favorite uh, breakfast recipes whether you're vegan vegetarian carbitarian or carnivore there's a recipe for you uh, I've been having a little bit of a communication once you put your email in there and subscribe which is free it should actually click over to you if it doesn't then just let me know that you subscribed and you did not get your eight-page guide and then I will just manually send it to you but I want you guys to have an amazing amazing blessed day in good health and happiness this is dr heather saying have an amazing night and i'll be seeing you soon if you're watching on replay put replay and Anne marie have a great time with your chicken and your horses and your dogs and your cats and i'm gonna go find my german shepherd because she loves the snow she goes out there and she rolls and plays in the snow i know i'm obnoxious it's a good thing we didn't have facebook live when my boys were little because i have four boys in eight years because that's all this would have been has been a whole bunch of videos of my kids i still try to do it but they run now like they snapchat their friends but they don't want me taking pictures of them but you know you guys have a great evening an amazing weekend i know some of you i'll be seeing in uh, las vegas next weekend so if i'll be seeing you in las vegas let me know put like a cowboy hat or a cowboy shoe because we have a cowboy theme there so i'll be seeing you guys th thursday in las vegas or wednesday have a great night